So conference championship weekend kicked off with a bang last night in the Pac-12 championship where USC took on Utah in a rematch from USC's only loss this year. And this was a game with a lot on the line. For the USC Trojans, a win would mean a college football playoff spot. However, ultimately, it was Utah who came out on top with a crushing win against the Trojans. This win means a team such as Ohio State has new life in terms of their college football playoff chances. Today, we need to break down the whole scenario. We need to talk about the implications of this game, but of course, before we can even get there, we have got to break down the game itself. Before we can, as always, though, y'all know the drill. I need to hear from you. Hop down to the comments, give me a Y for yes or an N for no. Are you surprised that Utah got the win in the fashion they did? And let me know what you're thinking. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification as I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoyed this content, be sure to like and comment down below as those interactions are massive to content creators such as myself and both getting picked up and maintained by the YouTube algorithm. But having said all that, let's jump right into this. And this was a game that before it happened, I was considering must watch TV especially when you looked at the totality of circumstances. This was a game that had been played earlier in the year, and it was a close game, an absolute nail-biter, where Utah came out on top. So when we looked at the rematch, there were a lot of intriguing factors. USC's offense has been as deadly as any offense in college football, and when we really start diving into it, Caleb Williams has been sensational this year. They have so much in terms of wide receiver threats. The one thing that really, really hurt USC something that we talked about here on the channel was Travis Dye going down with injury because Travis Dye was having a real big season and he was a really big part of this USC offense. However, when he went down against Notre Dame, Austin Jones had himself a day, but Utah was able to sew up that running game and not allow USC to get anything on the ground. Effectively, they made it to where Caleb Williams had to beat him with his arm. There was no other path to victory. And this is something we've talked about. It's something that I thought Notre Dame would try and do. Take away something from USC, push them to be one-dimensional, because they just have so many options on offense. Defensively, USC has got a lot to figure out this offseason. Because Utah had two running backs that averaged over eight yards per carry. And you're going to have a real hard time winning big college football games if you absolutely cannot stop a team. And what's so interesting about this game is whenever we talked about this game in the live streams, my biggest concern for Utah is what happens if you get behind? What happens if USC jumps out to a lead? Whenever we watch this USC offense, they have a lot. And while Utah is a great team, I think if you've been around my channel for any extended period of time, you've probably heard me talk about Kyle Whittingham and how he is one of my favorite coaches in college football because look at the results he gives you on a year-in, year-out basis. Utah is consistently a really solid team in college football, and I just have so much respect for the program he runs and the manner he runs it. Kyle Whittingham seems like a really solid coach, and it just shows whenever we watch how Utah played last night, the inspiration in which they played with, the way they fought through adversity when USC jumped out to an early lead, because when I was looking at this, like I said, that was my biggest worry for the Utes. USC has so much offensive firepower. If they jump out ahead, are you going to be able to win in a shootout? And the answer for Utah, one, was yes, but two, their defense showed up after the first quarter and said, shootout isn't going to be necessary. They're not getting anything else. And after the first quarter, USC only had 10 points. Now, important to note, Lincoln Riley said during the press conference that during the 59-yard run that Caleb Williams had, he ended up hurting his hamstring and that he was never the same after that point, and that occurred in the first quarter. However, right now, we really need to focus on USC's defense because at the end of the day, Caleb Williams threw for 363 yards. Yeah, he may have been hurt and unable to run the football in the manner that we've become so accustomed to him doing, but you threw for almost 400 yards. If your quarterback throws for almost 400 yards, gives you three touchdowns, he did his job. Yes, Caleb had an interception, but that's going to happen in big football games. We've seen it too many times. USC's defense has got to improve, and really, the physicality of the USC team as a whole is something that has got to improve if they want to be the team they think they can be. For USC to be able to make the college football playoffs consistently and win college football playoff games, you cannot be all offense. You have got to be a hard-nosed, 
physical football team. And this was really the same question I had about Tennessee earlier in the year, whenever we'd talk about the Tennessee Volunteers, and I said it consistently, hey, we've seen time and time again a team be able to run through the regular season with a high-powered offense. It's happened. But when you get to the college football playoffs and you start playing the best teams in college football, you have to have some level of balance to your attack. You cannot be one-dimensional because these teams are too good. They're too talented, and Utah showed us last night why you cannot be one-dimensional. USC had no rushing attack, and part of the reason was Utah's front was playing so stingy, they just dominated the USC offensive line. At the end of the game, Utah had 11 tackles for loss and 7 sacks, which is why I say, if you're Caleb Williams, you did your job. You almost had 400 yards while having 7 sacks, and your offensive line couldn't keep you upright, nor could they provide enough opportunity for a consistent run game, as I don't think anybody on USC averaged over 2 yards per carry that's how stingy that Utah front was. If you're USC, that has to be what's fixed in the offseason. And one thing we do need to understand, we need to conceptualize this a little bit. If we think about this in relation to the season USC had last year and under the Clay Helton regime, this season has been an absolute win for the Trojans. You've been exponentially better and your future looks exponentially brighter. But if you want to be a team that's winning college football playoff games, you know what you have got to improve on. Utah showed you clear as day last night. Luckily, it's only Lincoln Riley's first year there. You hope some of this can be fixed in the offseason, but it is something that has kind of been a theme with Lincoln Riley. He has been a great offensive play caller, but we've seen a lack of defense consistently, and this is something that at USC has got to be adjusted. Lincoln Riley has all the offensive capability in the world, but you're not going to go to a college football playoff game and win off of offense alone. You have got to be a defensive team that can at least stop people and not have to rely solely on your offense. And for USC, they have got to get there. They've got to get there in defense. They have got to get there in physicality along the offensive line. And before we get out of here, we need to talk about the back end of this. With USC losing, it gives new life to Ohio State's playoff chances. And this is something that's going to be really interesting to watch and something I do want to hear from all of you about. Today, if TCU loses, could that give Alabama an opportunity into the college football playoff, or do you believe that the committee would maintain a one-loss TCU? Can't wait to hear from you on that. Hop down to the comments, guys. Let me know what you were thinking. Just as kind of a quick recap, Utah gets a great win for USC, head held high. You had a great season. You had a far better season than many people expected, but if you are going to go the distance, if you are going to become the team you want to be, physicality and defense it has got to be a priority in the offseason because let's be honest Caleb Williams is still going to be there you still have so much in terms of offensive weapons that part of the game I'm not worried about the offensive line has got to have another layer of physicality added into it and the defense has got to be playing a better brand of football if you can do that USC could be a dangerous team and it's going to be something we have to watch hop down to the comments let me know what you're thinking that's it see you